Hi, Maya. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, um, getting ready for my birthday on Wednesday. So, oh wow! Happy <laughs> yeah. birthday in advance. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you so much for being my guest. I'm just so happy that I'll be asking you 11 questions today. Do you consider yourself introvert or extrovert? Definitely an introvert. Yeah, but I'm an introvert who um, can relate to people very well. And I've worked in mental health for years and I've worked in retail as a manager. So I had to be very extroverted mm -hmm. um, on the shop floor for eight, nine hours a day, talking to thousands of people. And I don't know how I did it because <laughs> it takes so much energy to talk to that many people, even, you know, even as an extrovert, I think. Um, but I am 100% introverted. <laughs> okay. Same here. What's your favorite way to spend a day? Oh, that's a lovely question. Um, I would say definitely going for a walk at some point, but not too early. So I'd wake up late, have a really nice breakfast, and then maybe just watch some like YouTube videos just to chill out in the morning, maybe read a little bit. And then later on, go for a lovely walk in the forest, come back and have a lovely dinner, and then just chill out, maybe have a bath, um, just very introverted, <laughs> introverted things. <laughs> Sounds like a great day to be. If I were to say that you can only eat one thing forever, what's that one thing for you? I would say it would be my bars uh, dalbat. I absolutely love it. I could eat it every day. It's something I never get sick of. So yeah, that would be the uh, at least a savory dish. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. I would also pick savory. Like I have a sweet tooth, but I don't think I can eat sweets forever. Yeah, exactly. I think you'd. I would get a bit sick. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> if I were to ask you to pick only one book, which one would you pick? Just for the beauty of the way it's written alone, even though it's very deep and intense. Um, the God of Small Things by Arundhati mm -hmm. Roy. I'm just floored by that book and the way that she's written it. And it would just keep me connected to the craftsmanship of writing. It would keep me inspired. And I just love her as a person and what she stands for. So I would say that. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites too. Love that book. What's your uh, most prized possession and why? Ooh. I would say... If I had to pick one, it would just be a photograph of my mother and me and my brother um, because she she died when I was nine. So um, just that memory would be enough because um, there wasn't like digital photography or anything in those days. So it really is um, so prized for me. I can see that photos hold such power, especially the non-digital ones, like digital ones you take like 100 and never look back. <laughs> exactly yeah so we are in COVID now we don't go anywhere but once this is over and we are back to normal I don't know what normal is going to be after this where would you travel first could it be abroad yeah anywhere um I would say back to Canada I have family there but that wouldn't necessarily be the main reason why I would go I just absolutely adore the country as a whole I think it's absolutely stunning and also as an introvert you could walk for hours and not see a single person <laughs> whereas in England where I live every beautiful place you always see about 100 other people um, because it's quite overcrowded here so I would I would go back to Canada. And speaking of travel if you could time travel <laughs> and an option to go 10 years into the future or 10 years into the past where would you go? <laughs> 10 years into the future, because I laugh and I'm smiling, but I've had, I've had a very difficult life and it's taken me this long to heal and recover from the things that I've experienced. And I was a lot more um, in a much worse place, let's just say 10 years ago. So I would not want to revisit. What are you most proud of in this last year? Oh, it actually ties into the, the, the previous question I think my healing I have really I think this time during COVID um, for me not much has changed because I lived such an introverted life anyway but I've really taken the time to heal and that means going into my deepest most painful wounds 
and sitting with them and being with them and I know that most people run away from Mm -hmm. that kind of work (laughs) so I feel very proud of that because I can see the difference in every every day I see the difference of doing that and I know how many tears um it took and still takes (laughs) that's awesome because I also know it's really hard to actually look within and, you know, face the demons, so to speak. It's very hard. Yeah. So it's, I think for anyone to do it is is so brave. And yeah. This last year is just like, you know, COVID ridden, just a horrible year overall, but still there were some lessons in it. What's the one lesson for you? Oh, this is going to sound really I mean, you, you probably get it as an introvert, but um, that I don't need as many people around me as I think that I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I always used to be someone with with a, a decent amount of friends or could make friends very easily. And this year, obviously, none of us have really been able to see that many. And um, when when my racial trauma came out earlier this year around the George Floyd um, incident, I actually lost um, a few white friends because they weren't able to accept the reality mm-hmm. of the situation and face their privilege. And so I lost quite a few friends, um, but I actually felt more free and liberated um, having only the friends that really got me and got the whole situation. And I, yeah, it's, it's been quite liberating to know that I don't need that many people around and that I, I can, handle my I can manage my own life and my emotions with less than I thought minimalist life (laughs) yeah exactly yeah it's interesting that you mentioned the whole racially charged movements that have happened in this year so my next question was very much around that like if you could snap your fingers and instantly make the world better what would you do I think about stuff like this all the time it sounds really obvious, I guess, but I would want us to all just see each other as human beings. I almost feel quite emotional actually saying this, but yeah, just for us to see each other as human beings and stop this like ludicrous. It, sometimes I have to remind myself that people still operate within these systems, like say, you know, that that someone would think someone was lower than them because of the color of their skin. I have to remind myself that that's still the reality and that it's happening to me and it's happening to um, people of color everywhere. So I think that would be the first thing because from that, then we could actually build communities and societies that were liberated and free and thriving. Whereas at the moment, we're, st- we're still stuck on trying to explain to people basic things like, we're all equal I mean it's basic (laughs) so much emotional labor on your part yeah exactly it's like we're stuck on this after how many years of being on this planet you know so (laughs) yeah and and violence against you know racially motivated violence would end and systems would would change so yeah it would be amazing yeah I would like to see that one day hopefully yeah Yeah. last question for you is If you were to pick one interesting life experience to share with us today, what would that be? So I was thinking about this and it is an interesting life experience, but it's also a very sad one. But I would say it's my most defining life experience and um, it's what my book is based on. And it's the death of my mother when I was nine. Um, And it's interesting because it defined the rest of my life. Um, So even though I was expected to get on with it and just be like a normal kid, a normal teenager, you know, all these things, I was plunged into the underworld immediately. You know, I don't think anyone could go through something like that at the age of nine and not view life completely the opposite to Mm -hmm. people around them, especially other children, because children are meant to be like really happy, carefree, right? at least to a certain degree, that's kind of the expectation, you know, like someone gives you an ice cream and like, you're supposed to be like really excited and happy. Whereas for me, it was just like, everything is terrible. Um, I understand death at this young age, or I'm, I have to maybe not understand death, but I have to face death when other kids don't have to do that. And also how am I going to be in the world without a mother? Like, 
it, it was just this massive defining moment, which I don't think I'll ever be able to really grasp the gravity of. I try, and that's what the book is about, and that's what I talk about on, on my platforms, but I'd say that was the most interesting because I look back now, and as I say in the book, it was like running a race with my peers, only that I'd been shot in the leg with an invisible bullet. So the wound therefore was invisible. So I was like limping along in this race with my peers, but I had this like massive gaping wound that no one could see. Um, and it's interesting to look back now and go, okay, wow, that that's why I thought that way, or that's why my life has turned out this way. So yeah, that would be the most interesting experience. Thanks for sharing with us. And, you know, I'm just so happy that you today are in much better place and you have done the work to heal yourself. So I'm just really happy for you at this point. Thank you so much. Maya, thank you so much for joining me today. It was really fun talking to you. And, you know, it's, I always feel great when there's another introvert around me because <laughs> I feel like I am validated. A hundred percent. Thank you so much for having me and asking all these amazing questions and giving me a platform to tell my story a little bit more. Thank You're you. welcome. And I wish you the very best with your book. Thank you. Thank you so much.